everyone, welcome back. And if you're new here, I am so excited that you're here and this is actually the perfect video for you because we're gonna try to get to know each other a little bit better. So while we sit down here together, I have my little hot cup of tea here. I actually wanted to make myself a matcha latte. Also, this is really hot. I wanted to make myself a matcha latte, but I have no idea where my milk frother went that I used to like mix up the matcha powder. So that idea kind of went out the window. Instead, I have a cup of chamomile tea. I'll be drinking that. If you guys want to grab yourself something, go for it. I kind of wish I had a glass of wine, but it's currently 129, so I'll have to go for tea instead. So first, I guess I'll just give you guys a little bit about me in general. And then I also asked you all to ask me questions over on my Instagram, and I'm gonna go through and answer a couple of those as well. So first of all, if you didn't already know, my name is Margaret. I am currently 25, my birthday's in June, so I'm a Gemini, but I'm not really a big astrological sign type of person. Like I know that because of my birthday, I'm a Gemini. I don't know my, I think it's like my rising and my moon, have no idea. My birthday's June 12th. If anyone would like to tell me what that is, what that means, feel free, go for it. I would love to know. I'm just not super into that myself. So if you all have come here from my other social media channels like Instagram or TikTok, you know that I was previously living in DC. Technically, I was living in Arlington, which is, if you don't know, right across the river from DC. So I was living there, right? I moved there in 2020, basically in the middle of COVID. So I was living with this random roommate I found on Facebook. I wasn't doing anything, but I was saving a lot of money, so for that reason, it was great. But I was also living in a place where there wasn't a lot going on, which during COVID was fine. But then I found one of my best friends, Katie, actually on Bumble BFF, and we moved in together. She Once my other roommate moved out, she moved into my apartment there. And then we're like, okay, we gotta get out of here. We gotta get closer to the city. We wanna actually be doing stuff and not like, it was very like suburban residential. There were a lot of families and we're like, this is not our scene. So we together moved to Arlington in 2021. And then we were in our apartment there for two years. I loved living there. It was so great. She recently moved to New Jersey with her boyfriend and I'm actually going to visit her this weekend. I'm really excited about that. But I decided to move back here where I currently am to Maine. And this is where I'm originally from. I lived here my entire life. I moved into this house when I was six months old. Again, basically been here my entire life. I left to go to college actually in Virginia. And that brings us to my first question. So the question is, where did you go to college? I went to Roanoke College, which is in Southwest Virginia. It's actually not in Roanoke, it's in Salem, but they're like, they're right next to each other. It's basically Roanoke. So I went to Roanoke College. I started there in 2016 and I graduated in 2020 into the middle of a pandemic. So we had to go home in March and then basically stayed home. No one really knew what was going on. So the whole online school, basically my school year just ended in March and we didn't really have to do a whole lot. Had to do some like final projects and stuff, but nothing too bad. So my senior year got cut short. I didn't get my graduation. We ended up having it a year later, but I majored in business administration with a concentration in information systems. I actually went into college as a pre-med major. I said that I wanted to be a doctor. Looking back, I'm like, did I really want to be a doctor? I went to my like college admissions counselor in high school and I was like, I want to major in business. And she was like, oh, well, do you like math? And I was like, no, does anyone like math? And she was like, oh, then don't major in business if you don't like math. So I was like, okay, like this lady seems to know what she's talking about. So I was like, okay, what else do I wanna do? Okay, I'll be a doctor. So I went with pre-med instead of business. And then once I got to college, I, I hated chemistry. I had to take chemistry my first semester. It was so bad, it was so awful. And I was like, I like if I hate beginning chemistry this much, I don't think I can be a doctor. So I dropped pre-med. I was like, okay, like psych is pretty close to that. So I started taking psych classes and I also took a business class that semester. And I was like, oh, this like, yeah, this is the whole thing. I wanted to take business in the first place. I loved this business class. I feel like I've always been kind of entrepreneur, entre, entrepreneurial. It's <laughs> a really hard word. I feel like I've always been pretty entrepreneurial. So I really loved this business class and I was like, oh, well, why don't I just switch now and I'll stick to it. And I still think about this lady that told me not to major in business because 
I think I had to take one math class in college. One math class. It wasn't even calculus. I never had to take calculus as a business major. I took like math 110, which was like algebra. So I'm still I'm still a little bit salty about that, but I ended up I ended up getting my way to business in the end. And then my concentration information systems was a lot of like data analysis. And then that's what I do now. So this next question is what is your nine to five job? Currently, my job title is senior experience analyst. So what that basically means is when you've ever left a survey for a company like, let's say Sephora, I, I, I've taken the survey, that's why I know. You go to Sephora and you have that little QR code on your receipt. The team that sends out that QR code is going to be like what my team is doing. So you take that survey and then they then look at all of that data and try to figure out, okay, what are we, what are, what do we need to improve on? What are we what are we going to do moving forward? Let's find some areas of improvement. And it's not just like receipt surveys either. We send out like surveys on our websites. We um, like post experience surveys. And then if you've ever I don't do this at my current job, but I did at one of my previous ones. If you've ever called into a contact center, they say this call is being monitored and recorded. We then look at all of that feedback from all these people on the phone saying, oh, my order was lost or, oh, this thing that I got was damaged. We take that all and actually report on that. So if you think that nobody is listening to those calls, we are. And another thing I actually learned at that job with these listening to calls is that it depends on like the vendor recording the call, but sometimes they actually record you while you're on hold. So when you're sitting there on hold, do you think that nobody's listening to you and you're like swearing, getting all mad, you've been on hold for forever, or you're having like a side conversation about nothing in particular? We can hear all that. <laughs> so I've listened to those calls where they've had a whole separate conversation with someone else in the room. And I've just sat there and listened to it. And it feels very weird because these people don't really understand that even if you're on hold, you're still being recorded. So I have a couple more questions here about my job. This one is, does your corporate job mind that you have a public social media persona? No, they don't. Um, and when I was hired, I made sure that people knew, the right people knew, because I also don't love for just everyone I work with to know that I have a public, me public social media presence. So my first day, the first thing I do when I start a new job is I'll read the whole like social media thing you know in like the handbook they say like okay here are our rules for social media I make sure i read those i make sure that everything i'm currently doing fits with that and we're not going to have any issues which usually it does i'm not doing anything like egregious on social media so once i read all that you know usually you have a meeting with hr on your first day to get stuff sorted out and i just make sure that they know that and I say, I have this so public social media presence on this, this, and this platform. I'm not really doing anything in particular. I'm kind of just talking about my life, but I don't talk about specifically my employer. I don't really talk about work. I don't talk about what I'm doing specifically. And I kind of just have a good judge of what you should show and what you shouldn't. So, and I always like to err on the side of caution with that kind of stuff. So I just let them know we kind of have a mutual understanding and it's never been a problem for me in the past. This next question also kind of goes along with work and it says, how did you start out doing content creation and why? What drew you to this over say a normal job? And I do have a normal job. I think this is some people don't really realize that sometimes. I get a lot of comments from people. Usually it's on Instagram reels from people that don't follow you and just kind of see this stuff. And they're like, get a normal job. Like why blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I do have a normal job. <laughs> I don't do this full time. I would absolutely love to, but no, I do have a normal job. And when I was actually looking for my most recent normal job, the one that I am currently in, it was really important to me that it was remote because that gives me a lot more flexibility and time to do other things like social media and work on my passion projects instead of being fully into having to commute to an office. That takes like, it could take an hour one way and an hour back and then you're in the office all day. Now I'm able to do things on my lunch break. I'm able to do like do work for social media right up until eight o'clock when I start in the morning and starting right at five when I'm done. Obviously, as long as all of my corporate job work is done and wrapped up and I'm good to go, like I'm not gonna neglect my job responsibilities to do social media, but at the same time, 
working from home has just provided me with so much extra flexibility to be able to do these things that I want. But also with that question of how did you start out doing content creation, I have gotten so many different questions about how to start, what like tips and tricks. So if you all want a separate video just on content creation, how to start and kind of what it's all about. I would love to make one of those videos for you all. Just let me know if that is something that you all want to see. But I will answer how I got started on social media. So it's kind of a long road to explain. Like in high school, I started posting YouTube videos and I loved doing it. It was something that I really liked doing, but people at school started finding them and they weren't very nice. And at the time I was like 14 or 15. So I was not able to be like, okay, I'm going to ignore the haters. I'm going to do what I want. It really affected me. So when that started happening, I kind of closed up shop on YouTube and I was like, okay, you know, not meant for me. That's okay. I'll move on. So then kind of like in high school, then going into college, I tried to do the whole like Instagram influencer fashion kind of stuff, posting, like I had a blog at one point doing all of that. I love doing it, but it just didn't really take off the way that I wanted it to. And so I started doing it just more casually and that was fun. Like I liked doing it just as a hobby and because I liked doing it. But then in 2020 is when things kind of started to gain a little bit more momentum. And I created a TikTok account specifically for my house plants. And I talked about plants and buying plants and taking care of your plants and all plant house plant related stuff. And I started getting a following on there. I think right now that account has 19,000 followers. It's still there if you guys want to go look at it. But I got really overwhelmed with trying to keep up that and also doing my job at the same time. And also like, I, you'd never think this, but the houseplant community can be really toxic. And I was showing how I take care of my plants and people were like, that is not right. That's the, not the correct way. You should be doing this, this, and this. And I understand, you know, the internet, there's gonna be unsolicited feedback, but it wasn't unsolicited feedback. It was straight up hate based on how I was taking care of these plants. So I was like, you know what? It's really not worth it. I wasn't making any money from that. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna kind of go dormant, post when I want, not gonna st stick to a strict schedule. And that was working fine. And I was like, you know what? I, I wanna start posting more about me again and about myself. And so I'd post a couple of videos on that account about me and my life and people didn't like it because they were there for houseplants. So I started losing followers and the videos weren't getting very much traction. So I was like, you know what? I think it was in March of 2021, March of 2021, I think I created a new account and I was like, you know what? It's kind of going to be like a shit posting account. I'll just post whatever and people aren't going to care. And then I had a couple of videos that actually started doing really well and I started gaining a following and I just started making the kind of content that I liked watching. So like these, what I spent in, what I spent this weekend, what I spent in a month videos, I loved watching those videos. I think they're so interesting. So I started making them about myself and those started doing really well. So I just had a lot of different kind of things that started taking off and it kind of snowballed to kind of where we are now. And so it hasn't been very long. It's been about two years and I have loved every single second of it. It has provided me with so many opportunities. I've met so many great people. And so now starting to post on my YouTube channel, I'm just hoping to, you know, meet more of you guys and get out there kind of in a different way because my content on Instagram and TikTok is very similar. It's all very short form. And I feel like YouTube is just a more personal platform. So that's that's kind of why I'm here right now and how I got to where I am in my whole social media journey. And in like I said, until now it has been wild. It has been amazing. And I hope we keep just keep going up from here. So going off of talking about those what I spent videos, this person here said, I love your videos about spending. How are you liking being back home? So with the spending videos, I am so glad that you all like that content because it is some of my favorite content to make. But also, do you all want to see that on here? That is where I originally started watching these what I spent videos and kind of fell in love with that style of content. So I'm very interested to know if you all just want the short form on 
TikTok and Instagram or if you want to see a more long form vlog style of the what I spent content. So then with the being back home, I got lots of different questions. Why did you move back home? Are you liking being back home? How has it been moving home? Do you get FOMO? I definitely get FOMO sometimes, but I think that it helps because my roommate, Katie, before she moved to New Jersey, so she's kind of in a different spot too. It's not like I moved and everyone stayed there. I've had a lot of friends move out of DC in the past couple of years, so I definitely get FOMO but I think it helps that I moved in the winter time. There's not as much going on, but I'm not planning on being here all the way until summer. So I don't think I'm gonna have a huge problem with that, but so far I've really loved being home. First, I'm saving a ton of money. I don't have to pay rent. So that has been a great thing. I've also just kind of been able to slow down. I was gonna say there aren't as many social commitments, but there aren't really any social commitments. like. I live in rural Maine, okay? There's not really a lot going on. If I'm doing anything social, it's with my mom and her friends. And we go to trivia every Thursday. That has been my one social commitment. So it's been nice to have like a set schedule where it's like, okay, I work, I do social media stuff, I go to the gym, and then like I'll watch a movie with my mom. And I have that kind of schedule that we've gotten into, which has been really nice because living in the DC Arlington area, it was crazy. I feel like I was just doing stuff all of the time. I was always trying to find new stuff to do. And so it's been nice to kind of slow down and take the winter to kind of calm. And then we'll figure out what's next. Honestly, I don't really know, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Right now, I have really been enjoying being home. This next question, whenever I put like an ask me anything or like a, I'm gonna do a Q&A on YouTube, ask me questions. I get this question and it pisses me off so bad. It's, are you single? Or people are like, are you, do you have a boyfriend? Blah, 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 blah. Yes, <laughs> I do have a boyfriend. No, I'm not single. And I just think it's funny because these people are following me, but don't know that even though I do post vlogs pretty regularly with Kyle. I post them on my story. Like I have a whole Instagram highlight for him of pictures of him and us and people still don't understand it. So last time someone asked me that, I posted a story and I'm like, yes, like I do have a boyfriend. I talk about him pretty regularly. And this one person was like, well, you never really post him. I'm like, well, then you're not really paying attention. Okay. Ugh, men, men piss me off so much. Um, but anyway, anyway, moving on, I guess with that, I'll take a little sip of my tea. This next question, are marriage slash kids something you see in your future, near or far? Yeah, I definitely see marriage and kids in my future. Definitely not in my near future. I still feel like a teenage girl. I say all the time, I'm like, I still feel like I'm 19 years old, but obviously I have an adult job. I'm very much an adult. I just don't, I don't feel like an adult. I feel like a teenage girl. <laughs> so having a kid seems like the most terrifying thing ever, especially because like, I'm currently living at home. That makes me feel even more like a teenage girl. So yes, I would love to get married. I have a whole amazing wedding Pinterest board of my dreams. And yes, I would love to have kids, but definitely nowhere in my near future anytime soon. Please hope to God that no, 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 no. I also got a couple of questions like this one. What do you miss most about living in Nova? And I honestly think it's the people. I made some really amazing friends when I was there, being able to hang out with all of them, have this kind of community, especially because posting on social media, the media there, people kind of knew who I was. So I would go out to the bar and people would be like, oh my God, I follow you on TikTok. And I would just have like an immediate friend, like an automatic friend because they follow me, they know me. And that was, it was just a really great feeling to kind of have friends everywhere I went. I also like DC and Northern Virginia, I feel like tends to get some hate. I don't really understand it. People are like, oh, like living in DC sucks. I honestly really loved living in the area. I thought it was great. It wasn't too big of a city and it, it has some really great perks, like all of the free things to do. The weather is honestly really great. As someone that grew up in Maine, it gets really freaking cold here. And in, you know, Northern Virginia, DC, you have winter, but you don't have like 
winter. So, and you have all of the four seasons. I just think it's a really great place. For the most part, everyone is pretty friendly. And I never really felt unsafe either. I know sometimes you go to a new city and you're like, ooh, this is kind of sketchy. There were times when I was like, that is kind of sketchy, but as long as I was with people, I never felt unsafe. So I just really loved it there. So there are really so many things that I miss about living there, but number one, it's definitely that great group of friends that I ended up making. All right, we've made it to our final question here and it's what is your favorite food? This is a really hard question because I used to be a super picky eater, but after I graduated college, I definitely tended to branch out a little bit more and I have found a lot of new foods that I really love. So it's really hard for me to say, ooh, this one food is my favorite because I also feel like I'm always hyper fixating on different foods. So at any given time, the food that I really want is gonna be a lot different. But I think oh, this is one of those questions that I like really don't like because I never have a really good answer. But it's also at the same time, I have a huge sweet tooth and I'm always craving sweet stuff and I love chocolate so much, but I'm like, for a favorite food, it's kind of lame to say like chocolate ice cream or something like that. So I think if I were to say a, like a favorite meal, I guess, I really love, I have a Thai place in town here that's called Best Thai. And what I get there is a crispy pad Thai with chicken. And no matter how hard I looked, I could never find somewhere in DC or Northern Virginia area that had crispy pad Thai. So every time I come home, I am at the Thai food place, I'm getting a crispy pad Thai with chicken. So that would definitely have to be one of my tops. And I also just, I love salmon, like a salmon bowl, grilled salmon, blackened salmon on a salad. I love salmon. So salmon would also probably be one of my tops though. So, yeah, let's say salmon and crispy pad thai with chicken. Those are my two top foods. Oh, that's so hard because there's so many other good ones, but we'll say that. So now I wanna get to know you all a little bit better too. So I wanna know what your favorite food is. If you wanna leave your favorite food in the comments, it's gonna make me super hungry, but I would love to hear all of them. Thanks for sticking around with me. I've liked this little sit down and do a little bit of chit chat with you guys. I hope you learned something new about me. You feel like you know me a little bit better now. And if you want to see more of my like day to day, make sure to go check me out on Instagram and TikTok because I post a lot more regularly there, but I post usually at least once a week. I'm hoping hopefully that will continue here on YouTube. So I hope to see you all back here next time and I'll talk to you later.